So thank you all for being here. Uh, Dr. Bill, I, um, by the way, I'm also married to an Alabama grad, which uh, I rarely <laughs> mention on the campaign trail, being from Louisiana, so I'll just point that out. <laughs> um, she was a couple years after you at UAB. Um, the, um, I would just have my teeth done, and Senator Sanders talks about the expense. He just touched on the cost of tuition, but I was amazed at the technology in a dental office. They don't put the little x-rays up as they did when I was a child, it's all digitalized. And I can imagine it's fairly expensive. I also understand it's a highly regulated industry. We want to make sure it's sanitary, but there's a cost of compliance. And then as you mentioned, there's workforce shortage, which I presume that you pay the hygienist more. Uh, that hygienist was out that day, so I had the dentist's wife taking care of me, which uh, we had a great conversation. So all that to say, like, what percent of a typical dentist uh, practice goes to overhead and then if they're just out, and Dr. Swan, you can answer this too, please, uh, what percent of their income would be dedicated towards paying back student loans? That's a good question, Senator. Um, you know, o overhead has increased exponentially over the last 43 years. Uh, the cost of having quality individuals, uh, for my patients of all income levels, uh, which we treat the very poorest to the people that do better. Uh, I want them to be able to understand the care they need. So we have interoral cameras, we have monitors to be able to show them what's there to where they can make choices to have quality health care. Every individual does. And what, what percent of your, uh, like, like a dentist back home told me that like 60% of his, uh, he's got a 60% overhead. I think it's higher than that. I'd say 70% at this time. Is that, would that include the student loan payments to go back? It does not. Uh, so it would be even higher. Dr. Swan, would you kind of agree with that? Totally agree with that. Uh, it does not include student loan payments. And pe people are just getting out of school. It's going to take them five to seven years before they start breaking even in business. I've never been to a dentist in Mexico, but I can imagine they might still have those little x-rays and not the digital that we've become familiar with. Uh, I just say that because there is a quality of care that you two provide, which is quite remarkable. Um, let me move on. Uh, Dr. Swan, if 100% of an average patient, of 100% of an average dentist payer mix was at Medicaid rates, could that dentist stay in business? Most likely not, but that dentist could mix it. I get that, so it's payer mix. Mm -hmm. Dr. Isabel, you're actually in practice, and Alabama's like Louisiana. You've got a lot of poor folk. I do. Um, do you see pediatrics? We do. We, so, so you got some Medicaid patients in there. We don't. Uh, you don't. If you if you had a hundred percent of Medicaid, I'm suspecting that you could not keep your doors open. We could not. Now I, I point out, Doctor Senator. I just I, I don't know if I demoted you or elevated you. Uh, I was about to say, Doctor Sanders. Um, <laughs> Senator. <laughs> oh yeah. Senator Sanders uh, sometimes refers to being poorly insured, but that's a euphemism for Medicaid. I was just in California, and there's a hospital going out of business, they think, because they got so many Medi-Cal patients, and Medi-Cal pays so poorly. Um, so I, I just want to point out that whenever we talk about mandating uh, through Medicaid, if you mandate the dentist to see the patient, then you are going to end up with bankrupt dentists. The other thing I've been told by private dentists, the, the section of Baton Rouge, uh, principally African-American, as African American, African American dentist, and my, my and they don't tell me this, but my colleagues do. My my my, um, the folks that were my colleagues in our free clinic for the working uninsured, that when a community health center brought in dental services, they put those two dentists out of business, because they could they basically had their practice underwritten by the CHC, and they get a they get a higher Medicaid rate, they get 1.5 times, and so. So the, these guys were saying, we just lost two dentists in a bad section, you know, poor section of town, bad, bad, bad dental care, bad um, um, uh, dental health care. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, and, and so is that a perverse effect of the CHC? I'm not criticizing the CHC. I'm just kind of pointing that out, what I've observed. Dr. Swan, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I don't think it's necessarily a general reverse effect. I think that's an isolated issue. What I do feel in my practice, when I was doing private practice, I looked at the demographics. 25% of the population was on Denicap. 
So I accepted that. We were able to make ends meet. But it also meant building social capital. You must have had another mix. You had a, a better off patient with commercial insurance or able to pay private dollars. We had a mix. In order, because I'm suspecting your dental cow was paying you below cost. Right. Okay. And, and Dr. Isbell? Yeah, you know, really in, in that particular situation, you know, in our community, our, it's called Quality of Health, our community health center. And for 40 years, I've worked with the dentists there. They've worked with our societies, and it's really been a collegial situation. It's been wonderful for the citizens of our community. And we've also, then they've, and the dentists there have been helpful in our free clinic that we've started also, and also building the community uh, college programs and working on workforce with building dental assistants and hygienists there. So it can be there together, but I know other areas uh, of our state where it didn't work so well and there were dentists that it was unfair competition and they basically end up closing and moving. So it's important communication, just like for you guys, it's about communication, it's about sharing, but always, always putting your patient first and taking care of your patients. And I think the doctors here will agree with that. Thank you all. Thank you. Senator Boltman. Thank you. 